Hello and welcome to the Manic Miner AGK tutorial. Um, in this session I'm going to show you how to create the splash screen. So let's start AGK and we're going to create our new project. So file, new project and we're going to call this Manic Miner AGK. Click create and if we click compile all gone well we should see compilation finished successfully and then if we click run then we should get a um, large window on the screen uh, with some figures in here and this shows the frame rate and it will be dependent upon your system so it may be faster or it may be slower okay that's good so for this project we're going to change the resolution um, to 640 by 480 and not 1024 by 768 so here we go, 640 by 480. This flag here says whether it's full screen or not. Um, we're not, we're gonna run in window mode. I'm gonna set the virtual resolution to match. So 640 by 480. And in terms of orientation allowed, we don't want portrait. So we're going to switch those options off here. And we're going to have landscape in either orientation upside down or not. Now if all goes well we can click run and we've got a smaller AGK box upon the screen like so. Okay that's good. Now the next stage to create our splash screen is we need to open the containing folder so on the project right click your Manic Miner AGK open containing folder and if you've compiled it once you should see um, a media folder and we're going to create three folders for this project one called config one called images and the last one called sounds and then using your favorite program whether it's MS Paint, GIMP, Photoshop um, elements Photoshop, um, uh, Affinity, there's a multitude of programs out there. Uh, you'll need to create a image that is 640 pixels by 480 pixels wide. And um, uh, with any luck, I should have one uh, ready to go. So here's one I've made earlier, and it just says Wonky Pix Presents splash screen and we've called this splash screen.png and it's in the folder images and as you can see here it's dimensions to 640 by 480 obviously if you're using windows the, the screen will look slightly different okay now that we have that in place the, the next part is we're going to create a function to um, display the splash screen for us and rather than see me type all this in um, rather slowly I'm just going to cut and paste the function that I prepared earlier. Ta da! Okay, so what have we got here? Um, we've parameterized the function, so we've called it draw splash screen, and we're going to pass a image name as a string. So we can reuse this function and display multiple screens if you've got multiple images you want to, to have on display. Next, we're going to clean up the memory um, because we might reuse this at some stage so just to make sure that there is no images held in memory any sprites any objects or any text we're going to delete all of those and if it's the first time we started the program then it wouldn't have any effect next stage is we're going to clear um, the screen or set the clear color to black so these three values are red green and blue and they have a value 0 to 255 so 255 here would mean solid red, solid green, or solid blue. And you can play an experiment with that as you see fit. And the border color um, is relevant when you um, expand the window, for example, um, or if you're playing on a mobile device that doesn't support the resolution you set here natively. So it'll add a black border. Next, we're going to load the splash screen so we create a variable 
called splash screen. And we're going to create the sprite by loading the image called image name, which is what you passed to the function um, earlier. We're going to set the sprite position. So in this instance, 0, 0 is the top left corner. Um, if you've played with graph systems, you might expect it to be in the bottom corner over here. But the AGK system, 0, 0 is at the top. Um, working from left to right, with right being um, a positive number and going down. So the bottom right hand corner would be 639 by 479 because 0 to 639 is actually 640 pixels. So we set the position and we're going to set the color alpha. Now the alpha is the transparency and we're going to set the initial transparency to 0, which is fully transparent. You can't see it. Then we create what's called tweening sprites. And the tweens here um, will have a value of duration. So one second and two seconds. So for fading in, we're going to set a value of one second. For fade out, two seconds. And then we ask the tween or tell the tween what we want it to do. And in this instance, we want the fade in to go from an alpha of zero, so fully transparent, to 255 which is fully opaque and we're going to use an easing function. Easings make um, the transition from going from transparent to fully opaque seem more natural uh, or more realistic than just a linear um, like we used to do in the old days. And on the fade out we're doing the reverse so we're fading out from fully opaque to fully transparent using the same easing method and on the website there's a link to uh, what these easings can do. Now we're going to set the tweening sprite to play. So we're going to play the fade in um, against the splash, splash screen. We'll set a timer. So this is the system timer, not the system time, but this is measured in milliseconds. Um, or sorry, in seconds. So we set the variable. It's a um, floating variable or float. Um, so we added hash here and we have a while loop to say while the timer minus the original count here is less than four seconds then loop and in the loop we update the the tweening action or all sprites that have got a tween um, and getting frame time gives the offset to the tween and sync ensures that the updates are drawn to the screen so this should limit it at 60 frames per second, for example. When four seconds has passed, so the sprite will fade in for one second, hold for three seconds, we're going to fade the sprite out over two seconds. So the whole duration is six seconds. And in this instance, rather than use a timer, like we've done here, we're going to use a different technique, which is to check if the tween has finished playing. So in this case, we're looking at fade out against the splash screen sprite. If it's still playing, then we'll just update the tween action. Sync the screen, so we have the updates and draws. And when that's finished, this will naturally drop out of the loop here. And finally, um, it's good practice to delete um, any tweens that you set up to release memory and to delete the images and the sprites accordingly. Again, this releases memory, and on mobile devices, that's quite important because you'll run out very quickly. Then the final thing to do is now we've defined this into a function, is to actually get it to, to draw the splash screen for us. And we can do that now with one command. Draw, splash screen, and as you can see, we've got autocomplete on here. Open our bracket and provide the image um, as the, the string. So we're going to say images because it's in the images directory and splash screen dot png. Now if all goes well we click compile that should be successful and if I've got my name set up correctly here um, then we should see a splash screen and here we go wonky pics presents And we've dropped out of the splash screen routine and we can see we've got 60, almost 60 frames per second there. 
Now, if you wanted to add additional splash screens to the start of your, your game, you can simply copy this line of code, like so. And although I haven't created a second secondary screen, it'll display the same one again. But if we run this, you'll see the wonky pics fade in and out twice. And effectively with two lines of code. So thank you for listening. My name's Jason, and I'm um, bringing the Manic Miner to AGK project to you. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you find the series interesting. As always, I'm looking for feedback. Please take a look at our Facebook page. Um, please like us. Um, you'll get exclusive access to um, new releases as, as they come along. Uh, and it also helps us as developers. So thank you for your time, and happy AGK.